All right, welcome to today's webinar. This is a live webinar. We are recording it, but we, we reserve the right to not send it out. Sometimes the recordings aren't that great, so we just want to make you aware of sometimes, most of the times we record these, but sometimes we send them out, sometimes we don't, depending on technical issues. So, predicting markets with volume and price, your guest speaker today is Nigel Hawks. My name is Schubert Centers. Uh, welcome to the webinar. So, um, Nigel is, is one of the coolest guys that I know. I always tell people, like, when I grow up, I want to I wanna be Nigel. I, I, first time I met him, I'm like, dude, you're just the coolest cat in the world, and I, I kind of use the analogy, he's like a, a modern day James Bond, like he, he lives on the Isle of Wight, he sails, he's got a hot girlfriend, uh, he, he, he eats lobster, he loves caviar, I'm like, and, and I don't mean like he's not the, the Richard Moore Bond, he's like the, the Sean Connery Bond, and he's got a cool accent, so I always tell everybody, when I grow up, I want to be like Nigel, so um, uh, Nigel and I are, are, are good friends, uh, we've been friends for a while, and uh, recently now we're, we're business partners, because uh, I liked his indicators so much that I bought into his company, and uh, we ended up buying 40% equity in his, in his company, and the reason being is not just because we're friends, but because he is second to none in his volume analysis and his volume indicator. So a lot of indicators that you look at nowadays are very laggy. If it's not related to price and or volume, it's probably laggy. Now there are a few of them out there, like Ichimoku, it'll forecast for you, right? So I like that one. But if you don't know how to do price action, how to read price action, and compare and contrast it to the volume of what's going on, then you're really missing a piece of, to the puzzle. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to Nigel, and I want to make sure, Nigel, if you don't mind, guys, if you can hear me, give me a yes in the chat box really quick. That'll let me know that my microphone's working. And uh, I'm going to have my, Nigel tell you the story about Monaco, and then as soon as he gets done about the story in Monaco, he's going to do his PowerPoint presentation, and then he's got a black tie affair that he's going to, so it'll be a quick webinar, because um, he was on a minute ago, and his webcam was on, I saw him in his, in his bathrobe, I'm like, man, I'm just glad you got clothes on, and he, so he's like, I'm getting ready to go to a black tie event, I was like, oh, okay, let's just stick to that story then, um, <laughs> and, uh, so He's going to do the first part of it, and he'll turn me loose, and then he's going to go jump in the shower and go to his black tie affair. Uh, Nigel, it's all yours. Uh, okay, thank you. And uh, you can see my screen clearly, uh, Hubert, and you can hear me clearly. Can you just check for me? Yep, you're good to go. Thank you. Well, thank you, everybody, for uh, uh, coming to listen to me. I know it's uh, uh, midday in America on the East Coast. Uh, for me, it's just after 5 o'clock, as Hubert said, uh, making me blush if you could see me on a webcam. I'm not James Bond, I'm just Nigel Hawkes from the Isle of Wight, which is an island just off the south coast of England, uh, between England and France. Uh, I've been trading for about 23 odd years now, and I'll tell you all my story a little later. Hubert, are you sure you want me to tell, you, to tell that story about I, I love this story. Do I you? love this story, man. Say, I, I love the story. It's a, it's a great story. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, I'm just going to tell you something that happened to me with Hawkeye. Uh, first of all, let me say, Hawkeye has evolved into a business. I never thought I'd start out uh, producing indicators and having them sold in the market. I just produced a trading system for myself, and people saw what I was doing, and it just morphed out in, in, into the marketplace. And now we've got many, many thousands of traders using Hawkeye volume around the world. But the, one of the funniest things that happened to me, and I know Hubert loves this story, but I thought he was teasing me when he said, oh, just tell it at the beginning, because it's, it's such a great story. Um, a few years ago, I'm sitting at my trading desk and my telephone rings, and uh, I've got call uh, uh, um, show so I can see exactly who's phoning me and from where, uh, because normally people can find my home number on the internet now, and they phone up and ask me, shall I buy now or shall I sell on something? So I sort of monitor uh, the incoming calls. Anyway, this one came in, and I saw it was from France, and, and, and I rather enjoy France. So I picked it up, and this very uneducated English voice went, hello, is that Nigel? And I went, yes. He says, uh, he says I've got your stuff, Orkai. He says, it's easy, isn't it? I said, well, it is to some, maybe not to others. He said, well, I find it really easy. He said, I want you to come and give me a one-on-one a -on -one mentoring session, he says, for a, a couple of days. I said, who am I speaking to? He said, Frank. I said, well, Frank, I'm really tied up for the next year, you know, bookings on, on mentorship because I rarely do them, uh, everybody, uh, because 
they, they are draining to do. So um, he said, oh, that's a shame. He said, I really want to meet you. He says, I want you to come and see me. I said, well, well, where are you speaking from? He said, Monte Carlo. He says, I had to move down here because I've got your stuff. I said, oh, Frank. I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, come down. He says, I'll give you a first class ticket. He says, I'll give you a great weekend. So uh, he, he sounded such a character. I said, yeah, OK, Frank, I'll come down. So I fly down first class British Airways down to Nice. At Nice Airport, I come out there. There's there's a guy holding up my name, thinking I'd get in a car, but it's not. It's the helicopter, uh, a shuttle into Monaco. I get to Monaco. I go to the uh, Hotel de Paris, which is right by Casino Square, and I have to meet Frank the next morning at uh, at uh, midday. So. I go to his apartment building, which also is in Casino Square, and he's got the uh, penthouse uh, apartment there. So I'm always early. So I'm there about literally only about five minutes before our, our scheduled meeting. And the concierge had my name on the list, so he said, Mr. Oxy, you go upstairs, there's the lift. So I get in the lift, and I go up, and it opens into his apartment, and he's standing there, and he's in a dirty dressing gown. He's got long, lanky black hair, holding a cigarette, unshaved, uh, yellow fingers and what have you. He said, you're early. He says, you're four minutes early. He says, I'm, I, I, you, you're flustering me. He said, I'll tell you what. He says, go to the kitchen. He says, get one off the bottom shelf. He says, two off the top. He says, you'll find the glasses. He says, and I'll see you on the terrace. Well, I opened his fridge, and I have to tell you, there were two rows right at the bottom of Bollinger uh, uh, champagne. Then the whole rest of the fr fridge was virtually caviar. So I took two tins, two, two small tins of caviar and teaspoons I found and, and glasses and went out and sat on his balcony. I know a little bit about art, and I'm looking around, and I see these wonderful paintings, and I thought, that's a Matisse. And I went up, and it is. And anyway, he came out. I said, Frank, I said, tell me. He said, how did you get here with Hawkeye? He said, well, he says, I used to be a taxi driver in London. He said, in my rank, that's the taxi stand, you know, where you get a taxi. He says, well, right outside the London Metal Exchange, he said. And I'm driving some of the traders home one night. And he said, I heard one of them say something about Orkai. He said, I got home. He said, I looked you up. He said, I got your software. He said, I played with it for a couple of months. He said, and then I started to trade. And just as I started to trade, he says, my dear mum died. He says, and uh, she left me three houses. He said, well, I sorted out the old estate and everything, and I carried on looking at your stuff. And the first trade came along. He said, I put a house on it. He says, and bugger me. He says, within about two days, he said, it had earned me an house. He said, and that's how I've done it. He says, I've had many houses out of Orkai. He says, it's just easy. And I said, well, it might be to you, Frank, but not to everybody. He said, well, come and see my trading room. So I went into his trading room, and there were these Mac computers there, and uh, those wonderful Mac uh, uh, 27 inch screens and I just moved stuff around he said oh that's wonderful and oh, he says I'm so pleased you came to see me and that's Frank and that's one of the funniest stories I think I have of Hawkeye and of course he made a lot of money because he had the bull market in copper and he was just bad trading copper and then he rang me up not long ago and, and, and I speak to him quite regularly and he said oh no he said he said I've done much better he says I've been short on crude he says that's even better than bloody copper so that's the story on Frank anyway there you go Huber told the story but you haven't come to hear that story so let me take you through everything predicting markets uh, with volume and price so let me take take you through all this and first of all, we've got to go through the normal disclaimer. This is for education purposes only. If you're unhappy with that, please leave the room. We're not licensed to give trading advice, nor do we wish to. And let me take you through what we're going to do. Now, I know, having been on the other side of the fence, PowerPoints can be exceptionally boring. We're going to rattle through this pretty quickly, get to the most important part, live chart examples, questions etc. But I just want to give you some back background first. We're going to do a small introduction to volume. We're going to do the application of volume. Closing thoughts, the most important point is the uh, questions at the end. And then, of course, there will be a great offer that we're going to give you right at the end of the seminar on Hawkeye volume. So let's talk about traditional trading. And when we look at 
traditional trading, we all know that 70 to 80 percent of traders are failing. They're failing for many reasons. Um, and, and if I wanted to, to list some of them, one would be their mental strength, secondly, they're underfounded, but thirdly, the most important is that they're using traditional trading stat uh, strategies, the MACDs, stochastic bollinger bands, Elliott wave, moving averages, etc. That's one of the reasons why they lose, and the reason for that is they don't work, and volume is so important because volume is the only leading indicator in the marketplace. I don't know if any of you have been to the Merck in uh, Chicago, but when you go to the Merck in Chicago, you will see the price running around in neon lights um, on the open, the high, the low, the current price. Let's say that's in a, a, a 12 font. In 16 font at the bottom is the volume going through through on each indi uh, on on each instrument underneath. So it is so important. It signals price move before it happens, and I will come and show you examples where I've got some Mac MACDs up on charts, etc. And it'll just show you the volume way before all these other indicators that we use. And by the way, the MACD is the most used indicator out there. It signals market intent. What do I mean by that? Particularly for you stock traders, markets go through uh, uh, recycles, they go cyclical. In other words, you have accumulation at fair value, price move until it's overbought, distribution at the top, return to fair value, which is normally higher than the previous point of fair value, and then it will go up again and, uh, in, and get accumulated, distributed, and back down. And that's why markets zigzag. All other indicators, in my opinion, are lagging. I haven't found one other indicator that if I was on a desert island, I would want than volume. And this is the big trick. Volume on triple time frame is really the key. It is the secret. Once you start learning to use it between your time frames, and when I say triple time frames, let's just say, for example, you're on a, on a, well, it doesn't matter, but, but let's say a 60 minute, a 120 minute, and a 240 minute. So I double each time frame up, or a five minute, 10 minute, 20 minute, you'll see all the volumes come in together because remember, the only thing that we're trading, we're not trading Apple, we're not trading the Euro USD, we're not paying, trading the S&P, all we are trading is risk and when we trade we want to know that the risk is as low as possible and that is what volume on triple time frames does. So let me just back up for a little bit and tell you how I became a trader because it's quite an interesting journey that I had. Um, when I left school, I went to work for the uh, Times newspaper in London, um, where I was actually selling advertising space to begin with, and that was brand new in those days. And um, out of that, I became a section head, and then a supervisor, and then a manager, and I left and started my own publishing company, uh, which I sold out and uh, in the 1980s. And I invested a six-figure sum with a stockbroker because after I'd sold it out, sailing is one of my passions. I was invited to be a director of the British America's Cup Challenge, you know, the big America's Cup uh, sailing race, which was then down in Australia in Perth after Alan Bond had won it from the uh, New York Yacht Club up in um, Newport, Rhode Island. So it was defended down in Perth in Australia. But before I went there, I met this guy at a drinks party in London who was a broker. I knew nothing about uh, trading, vested a six-figure sum with him and went off. And when I came back over lunch, he told me he lost it all. I couldn't believe it. I thought the guys ripped me off or he was an absolute turkey. So what I did, I started to trade myself. I, in those days, there weren't computers. In fact, we were all terribly excited when Radio Shack brought out a calculator that you could uh, uh, calculate a moving average on. And um, I had a long trestle table, uh, a wallpaper table, you know, where you, where you paste up your wallpaper, I had graph paper, I did it all by hand, I know I don't look that old in the photograph, um, did it all by hand uh, and I was trading gold. i got to tell you I was terrible. In fact, I reached the stage that uh, if my logic told me to go long, I'd go short because I was wrong far more than I was right. But of course, that totally screws you up. I, I did that a few times. I was quite successful at it. Um, but it just screws you up and I thought I've got to stop this. And 
I really then uh, realized a few things. And first of all, you've got to be a loser first in trading. Very few traders trade out of the box and become a positive trader. Um, and during that, you wire yourself up for a lot of fear. And you've got to overcome that. So I always ask people to really work hard uh, on, on their mental strength when they're, when they're becoming a trader uh, because you do wire yourself up fear after having those losses. So what did I do? I traveled to the London Stock Exchange. I thought I got to treat this as a business and that's absolutely correct. You have to treat trading as a business. You don't dip in, dip out of it. It's a business. So I thought, well, where are the professionals? They're at the London Stock Exchange. I went along and I went there and I got to know the floor traders. In those days, of course, it was before Bin Laden and all the huge security that we have around the world now. You could just wander in and lean over the balcony and watch the boys trade in the pit. I went out at lunch with them. In those days, the stock market closed at lunchtime. I went out in the evening with them to the pubs and I got to knew them. And I found the missing link by just talking to them and really getting inside their psyche. And I understood that they had an advantage that we don't have. The first advantage they had was accountability. And that accountability is they actually had a job. They worked for somebody and somebody would say to them at the end of the day, how much money have you made? That's the only result that they want. What did you do? They don't want to have a, a, a commentary from you, well, it was a difficult day so I stood by the side and congratulate yourself that you didn't trade that day. They're in the business of making money. They have accountability. Most of us have a partner and uh, we have accountability to them and probably we lie through our teeth from time to time to, time to them. You know, how was your day, darling? It was absolutely wonderful, thank you. Did terribly well and of course you just sat on your hands all day or you did some trades but you came out far too quickly and left all the money on the table. So they have accountability. They also have free money, which is important to understand. They had the spread. They had the bid and offer. We don't have that, so we can't have that. But here's the most important thing. They could feel the market. They could feel buyers coming in, sellers going out of the market. They could feel the feeding frenzy. And if any of you go fishing, you know, you, when you go fishing, you go and see where the seabirds are diving. And under the seabirds are the little fish, and under the little fish are the big fish. And that's exactly what they do in the pit. They feel the market. They feel where the feeding frenzy is. And that guy is volume. And then I knew volume is the key, and I started my journey on trying to understand volume. And let me just tell you, it has taken me many, many, many years to perfect the Hawkeye algorithm and when you see it, you'll say, well, that looks pretty simple, but it's over 300 calculations per bar. It's probably eight years of dedication on my side of programming to really get to grips with it. And it is something which I consider to be my legacy to trading and I want it out in as many hands as possible. So where do we go? Well, everybody starts with Richard Wyckoff. He was the guy who traded in the 1930s, the doyen of, of uh, volume spread analysis, interesting in the 1930s. We also had W.D. Gann, a uh, wonderful guy. I've actually met his son. And uh, also Elliot and the Elliot Wave Theory. It's quite interesting that three big guys from the 1930s, we still use their stuff today in some form. And he studied volume and price, Wyckoff. Because in those days, remember, they were ticker tape reading. And I think uh, one of the best books out there is Reminiscences of a Stock Trader. And uh, it's a great yarn where they're out there in the bucket shops just reading the ticker tape. And of course, all they want to see on the ticker tape is price and volume. That, that's all the guys did. They were watching the feeding frenzies go through. So Richard Wyckoff studied the volume. And what did I do? I got on a plane. I discovered that his family lived in uh, America, in Phoenix. I went to Phoenix and there in a small little shopping mall was a printing uh, uh, press company which did photocopies and things like that. And I went there and I managed to buy his original course notes, put them in a U-Haul trailer, shipped them back to England and devoured them and really went through his original trade courses that he had and his original course notes. 
and I really studied it. And as I went through that, I realized that there was something missing in the work that he was doing. Now, as Hubert alluded right at the uh, beginning of this presentation, there are other companies out there that have, have volume indicators. I think they're all missing a very, very, very important trick, and that is the opening price principle. Now, why didn't Wyckoff have it, and why don't the guys today have it? Because they're just purists of Wyckoff. Well, the main reason is that in Wyckoff there wasn't a open of the market. Think about it. New York, Chicago, it was all lagged. It all went by wire. Then it went to Kansas City. Then it went to San Francisco. Then it went across the Pacific to uh, Tokyo. Then down to Sydney, up to Singapore, back to London. There was no defined opening price. Now everybody sees the same price at the same time anywhere at any time in the world. And that's why when gold opens and the COMEX pit opens and they set a price, everybody sees it at the same time. In Wyckoff's day, that wasn't the case. And that's why I think it is so important. Standard volume spread analysis doesn't, doesn't consider it. Hawkeye considers it as absolute paramount. And it really changed the whole algorithm when I realized where or how bland volume spread analysis was without understanding the opening principle. Why? Because it's exactly the same as an auction. Think about it again. A guy at an auction starts the auction at $100 for an item, and he goes 90, 80. There's no bidders. He goes 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20. Somebody puts their hand up at 20 bucks, it'll be bid up to 40. He puts his hand down, a hammer down, and it's sold. But if it started at 100 and went to 80 and somebody put their hand up, it'll probably run to 140. And that's why I want to see where the open is in relationship to the range of the bar and the range of the close. So I want to see that. And that is what makes Hawkeye volume different to every other volume indicator out there. It sets the bias for the session. So exactly as I just said to you with the example of the auction, if it opens and just goes down a little bit on the bar and then rallies back up through its open, we know that it's going to be a good move on that bar. It's very important that you understand that. You can go back. I mean, I, I have people in Hawkeye who just look on the volume and just trade it. So when it opens, if it goes back down through the open and we're in an uptrend, they'll trade it as soon as it comes back through the open price of the day. Um, and they're very su successful. So look at that uh, if you take uh, advantage of what we're going to offer you at the end of this seminar. So the app application of volume, and I'm going to give you some live examples, is very important. And then closing thoughts and questions. So it is the accumulation of 20 years plus of research. As I said, many, many, many years has gone into this. I used to have a programmer called Bob Sager, and this was when TradeStation was Omega Charts, and that brought out uh, Easy Language. I used to go to his house every day, and I used to sit in a chair with my eyes closed, and we used to type up what I was thinking on volume. Uh, so please don't think it's easy. It's been a very long journey that I've been on understanding this. It's a sophisticated way of trading. It's elegant. I have hedge funds who have Hawkeye volume and wouldn't live without it. It shows you how to see trades clearly. You know where you are. You lose the fear of trading when you see volume. When you just have a standard lagged average or a MACD or a stochastic, you don't really trust them because they're lagged. Volume isn't lagged. It shows you absolutely with clarity what is happening in the market. It's the DNA of really understanding what you're seeing. So you perceive those star charts in a much, much, much easier way. It shows you where to place your trades, the profits that you may take, the exits, etc. How to protect your positions, when to move your stops closer. You might be in an uptrend, but selling volume comes in. You're still convinced that you're in an uptrend? Well, tighten up your stops on the Hawkeye volume. So let me show you some examples. 
here, and this, these are off charts that I've created today for you, uh, and this is the ES Daily. Everybody's talking about, you know, every newsletter writer out there is uh, talking about uh, the ES and what's going to happen. Well, let's look at it. You can see that right here at the top of this market, we had the volume coming down. So right here, red volume, which is selling, white is no demand, and then we have green, which is some buying volume, all the way you get tests. You never get solid volume in a downtrend uh, or uptrend. You always get the market tested as people take profits off and the professionals test it to see whether there are any more sellers in the market, etc. So the market comes down, then right down at the bottom we get this spike down. Look where the close is under the open and go back to the opening price principle. So it's gone all the way down, been bid all the way back up here and look at the volume that's come through here and now we have this whole setup that's come in since the 19th of this month. We have these yellow dots which are the Hawkeye pivots, and they are Hawkeye pivots which are isolated highs. That's where the middle bar is higher than the previous bar and the next bar, and the low is higher than the previous bar and the next bar, and vice versa for pivot lows. And you also can see that we have something called a wide bar on here, which is magenta, which shows you that it's, <clears throat> excuse me, twice average true range over a 20 bar period. And about 80% of the time, the next bar closes within the range of the white bar. That's closed within the range. That's closed within the range. That closed out of the range, telling you that you're in trend run. But we, <clears throat> we uh, teach you all that when you come to class on really understanding and getting to grips with this. And then up here, we have the cyan arrow pointing down. Here is a classic volume test. There is the red volume that comes in. <clears throat> Excuse me, I must just take a sip of water. <clears throat> That's better. So you can see that we have the test here pushing the market back down. But look what the volume did. Although it was selling volume, the next bar, no demand. There was no selling. That was a test. No, no demand. And boom, no demand, green volume, and the market is up substantially today as it's pushing itself back up. The other thing to look at is look at that yellow dot there, which is an isolated low. It's higher than the low, and there is a yellow dot there, but I've got the arrow on it. Um, and, oh, goodness, I've changed charts. I'm sorry. I was in full flow there, and I can't change this back. So just go with the flow. <laughs> sorry. And, I just want to show you this on a five minute. This is the euro uh, 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 pound. Now, some of you will say, hey, there's no volume in Forex. Well, you're absolutely right. But we can pump tick volume into it, and tick volume will give us about 90% the same as if we were trading uh, uh, real volume. And again, here you can see that where I paste the arrow, we've had no demand before us, and now the red selling comes in, two bars of testing volume come in, and then boom, boom, down. This is on a five minute. So you can see that it works on daily five minutes, and I know that Hubert and a lot of you in the room that follow Hubert uh, look at the bonds. Just want to show you the bonds. You can just see, again, look at these yellow dots, they're all higher, that one's higher than that one, that one's higher than that one, that one's higher than that one. They are all showing you that the market is being tested logically on its way down and being pushed up, but there is no red volume as it's being sent down here. It's just coming down, being tested, and being sent back up again. And of course, if you used your MACDs and what have you, they would be lagging, they wouldn't give you this story. Now. Most typical volume analysis would paint that as a red bar. Why? Because it's a down bar in this up move. Hawkeye doesn't do that. It's telling you that that bar is being bought, this bar is being bought. All these bars are being bought through here. Conversely, if we look over here and here, you can see what it's doing. So the indicator that I'm talking about today, and I just want to get in after this, we will show you some live examples. Um, and I think I'm right in saying, Hubert, if you want any stocks to be seen, just put some, some symbols in and Hubert will read them out to me and I will take you through them. So, Hubert, you take over now. I would like to show 
uh, my, my live screen and just go through a few examples, Hubert, and then hand back to you. Is that okay? You go ahead, go ahead and show your live examples, and then it, then once you're done, you can just I'll just finish up. That that'll be fine. That way you don't have to switch back and forth. Okay. So can you As, see my can you see my screen with the Euro GP on five minutes? No, I'm still on PowerPoint. Okay. Sorry about that. What screen can you see now? Uh, big blue screen. Nothing on it. What screen can you see now? Uh, there you go. You're good. You're good. Okay. So what I've got here, I just wanted to show you. This is the chart that I did earlier today, which I've just showed it to you. And the indicators that we're talking about today are four in indicators, which are in the package. You get the Hawkeye volume, which is green for buying, white for neutral, red for selling. You can also put that on a plot or on the price. Let me just take it off the price now because I don't like it so much on the price. You get the Hawkeye pivot high, pivot lows, and you also get the Hawkeye wide bars when they occur, which are these bars here, and they have specific rule sets around them. Here is the example of triple time frame trading. So right at this bottom point here, you can see that the volumes came in. The volumes also came in here on the 15 minute, and the volumes also came in here on the 30 minute. If you were trading a MACD, you were still in downtrend, and you would have missed that whole of that move because the MACD as I was saying to you, is lagged. Let me come in and show you something. Uh, I don't want to show any more currencies. Let's come in and have a look at Apple Daily. And now, this is interesting. I don't know what Apple is today, Hubert, if, if you've got it. But yesterday, we painted that as red selling volume coming in here, but it's off a pivot low. At the close of this bar here, there'll be a yellow dot. And what do we expect of these yellow dot three, five, seven bar reversals. So this will be a one, two, three down, and then it'll be a one, two, three up, and some buying volume should be coming in. This is the other indicator, which I couldn't show you on the uh, five minute chart because it's just too fast. This is the volume radar, which comes in three colors. Scion for ultra low volume, a red dot for ultra high volume, and a yellow dot for high volume. And that is why that if you guys put out a moving average over here, you would say, well, that's ultra high volume. It's a lot bigger than that bar. No, that's actually ultra high volume because we're looking in profile to what's happened before it. So that is a high volume bar in comparison to these amount of bars, but that is not an ultra high volume compared to these bars before it. So that is why a moving average across volume, you might as well throw away. It's useless. But of course, once again, if you come across and look at the volumes, you will see that Apple Monthly here has been in since the 30th of September. It has been no demand volume, no demand volume, no demand volume, and at the end of December, it gave red selling volume. That's on, on monthly. On the weekly, you can see that it uh, from the 13th of November, uh, it's just been immediately straight selling volume until last week where a test of buying volume is coming in, hence this little move here. And that's very important to understand. And my final example before I'll show you, uh, I'll just take a couple of stocks from you. Uh, you can see again on the bonds, look at the bonds and Hubert will tie this in with his uh, cloud analysis. You can just see that there's been solid green buying all the way through here uh, with one bar of test volume, which is unusual. I would expect to see more tests of volume in that amount of up move, which shows you that it's pretty strong. And now I just want to get to some top stocks. And uh, let's go into, say, Amazon. I don't mind what they are. And uh, you can see that this is all being bought down here. And although it banged itself back down, it's being built up today again. This is being bought. Um, I think uh, Netflix was one that people like to look at. I don't trade stocks. I've just got enough trades going on without another form of uh, markets to trade. Um, I do trade BHP and Newmont, by the way. And I'll show you BHP here. 
uh, which is very, very interesting. BHP being the largest uh, miner in the world, or one of them. You can just see what's happening here. Netflix totally being sold off down here. Um, okay, some buying volume came in, but it wasn't tested. It didn't take out the high of the previous bar, and boom, down it came. Uh, let me just go and show you BHP because um, um, we can see this. This came. This stock has been up to nearly ninety ninety eight dollars at its high, which not so long ago. I got to tell you, and. Look at the pivot highs there that pushes it down. This is an ADR over in, in America. Um, but boom, down it came, placed the yellow pivot low on there on green volume, which has pushed it up from a low. And this is where I was buying it, right right down at 1846. I didn't get in there. But it's up to 20, 2180 now. So great, great buys. Why am I doing that against the others? I'm doing it because I've got weekly in here, and on my monthly, it's coming down, but the bar is closing in the top 50% of the range. That's an advanced technique that we teach, so probably not a very clever demonstration in this room, but to me, this is all paramount, and as soon as I saw the weekly come in here as well, and this weekly profile, which is the same as the monthly, I knew that we were onto something. Um, Hubert, any stock? that people would like me to look at. I'll take just three, Hubert, and then hand back to you. Um, let me see here. Um, USO, which is an ETF. Somebody, uh, I see, some, somebody is asked. Al Alberton on an FCX. FCX. Somebody has asked a question in the room. Can I use candles? You can use candles. I'm not a candle fan. Um, the only reason I'm not a candle fan is there is so much noise with candles. There is a, a pattern that you can find that does everything in my experience. And, and therefore, um, uh, uh, I just find it too, too noisy. I just like to see the relationship of open and closes and highs and lows. Um, so this is showing no demand and a bit of buying coming in. This is a wonderful bot bottom pattern here, by the way. Um, I, I've never looked at this stock, so you can see that it's come down. No demand, buying, buying. I'd like to see it take out that high. And when we come over here, it's it's solid downtrend here. And of course, isn't this, Freeport is part of the uh, oil market, isn't it? So I would uh, trade it correlated to oil. One more, Hubert. Hubert. McDonald's, MCD. MCD. Oh, look at that. That's, that's great. So, in all of these problems that we've had, we had, well, of course, that's over the Christmas period. Look at that. One, two, three down. Boom. Up it came with the pivot low, volume coming into it on the weekly. The monthly is just strong. It just hasn't gone short at all. Uh, the rest of the market has gone down. This one hasn't gone down. Look. So from uh, the 30th of April last year, it showed that there was no selling going into this at all. And uh, come the 31st of July, it just showed you that it was being bought all the way through here, no demand there, but being bought all the way through, this is a great volume example. And right here, look at this. This this rally, it reacted to the down in the market that came in, so it reacted uh, on, on all the computer programs, um, and then, of course, it was being accumulated down here, and boom, three days of volume sends it right up, so that was a four buck uh, up, up gain. Um, Somebody's asked some questions in here. Let me just see. Uh, uh, Jerry, Jerry has asked a question. Jerry, just uh, I don't understand why. Just um, email uh, team1 at hawkeyetraders.com with that question. Team1 at hawkeyetraders with that question. OK. OK, I'll hand over to you, Hubert. And uh, I wish you all a happy weekend. And 
please get the volume. It's not a huge deal. It's less than dinner for two, I can tell you, and it'll make you a lot more than dinner for two. So, Hubert, over to you, mate. Thank you, sir. Give Isme a, a hug and a kiss for me. Enjoy your black tie affair tonight. Thank you so and, much. Uh, have a great weekend, man. I'll see you, I'll see you early next week. Bye. All right, so I'm going to grab control here and see if I can't make myself the presenter. And I want this screen. So do you see my trade station screen now? Let me see audience view here. Oh, yeah. Looks like my trade station, right? All right. So I'm going to switch over to PowerPoint really quickly and make this top of most effect. And bring this over here. All right, cool. Now this is a. All right. Now, do you see the PowerPoint that says one, two, three on it? Do you see that? You should see it now. One, two, three. All right. So I'm dyslexic, so I like to do everything visual. So I don't do a lot of word stuff. I do a lot of pictures and drawing and stuff like that. So I'm going to show you a very simple three-step process now. I would use Nigel's volume indicators with pretty much anything that you have. I think it's very useful, it is very good, and it is, it'll complement anything that you use. Even if you use crappy indicators, it'll complement them. I'm a huge fan of Ichimoku, as you probably know. If you don't know, I'm a huge fan of Ichimoku. So what I do here is I just go through a checklist of how I would use this. If you didn't know how to use it, what would you do? So I, I feel a sneeze coming on. We got a little allergy attack here. I will try to hit the sneeze button. So at point one, we are the price action is above the cloud. Okay. So at point one, we're above the cloud and we're in an uptrend. Now at point two, right here, you can see that the price touched the cloud, and I have one green candle or bar chart there. Okay. That means that tells me I've got buying here at the cloud. Now, the whole theory behind the cloud is above the cloud's bullish. When it floats down to the cloud, it should bounce out of there. But you don't want to just blindly buy that, so you wait for one green bar, or you could wait for two green bars. So it would be valid uptrend, sell off into the cloud, one, one green volume, two green volume, you're good to go along there. Does that make sense? Don't make it more complicated than it has to be. You're just going to mess yourself up. Okay, that's the first one. Let's go to the second example. Here's another example. This is Citibank, CIT. Now you can see we're, we're in a, a valid downtrend here right now. This thing was trading sideways, and here at point one, do you see this uh, bar that is red that's telling me that the volume is red? So we're breaking below the cloud with a red bar. Volume is red down here. And then, boom, we get our second red bar here, too. Two, you can go one. One would be aggressive, all right? Two would be more moderate, in my opinion, all right? So if you've got, now you broke below the cloud, that's short signal one, short signal two. And then if you missed signal one and two, you just let it bounce back up to the yellow line and short it at point three and trail the stop loss lower. Here's your third example. Apple, AAPL, we broke below the cloud. There's our first red bar telling us it's sell volume there. There's our second sell volume bar there. So it's a sell, it's below the cloud. And if you missed one and two, just let it bounce back up to the yellow, short it there, and trail your stop lower. So just remember, one, two, three, keep it simple. One, two, three. It does not have to be harder than that. I'm going to go back through all three of these examples. Number one, the price action is above the cloud. If it floats back down to the cloud, I can buy it on green signal one or green signal two. For me, I would probably do it on two, not one. Okay? Can you use volume indicator on lower time stream? Yeah, it's just easier to show it on daily because if you, if you get into showing it with a, a three different multiple time frames, it can be confusing to describe it if you're not used to using it. So you, you, that's, the, that's why you do PowerPoints with just one time frame because everybody would like, I would like to see it on a 233 chart. How about a five minute? How about a one minute? How about a three minute? And it gets crazy. Right, so how is cloud determined? Uh, Wayne, you'd have to take a, a, an Ichimoku cloud course in order to go through that. All right, here we go. We're trading sideways. Boom, shakalaka. We've got one red bar below the cloud. That's an aggressive short. Two, that's a moderate short. And you could go ahead and short it there, or you could let it sell off, bounce back up to the turning line, and reshort it there at point three. And then the last example is Apple. Apple breaks below the cloud. It's now a short with one red bar. There's two red bars. Now we're good to go. And then if you missed it, just let it retrace back up to the turning line at point three, short it there, and then roll back over. 
So that's how it works. Now I'm going to take this and what I'll do is I'll do live charts at the end. Okay, let's do live charts at the end. So that's one, two, three. So here's what all this volume price analysis works on. It works on TradeStation, NinjaTrader, MetaTrader, eSignal, MultiCharts, and it will work on Thinkorswim, but you have to do it via NinjaTrader. And it will work on AmeriTrader, but you have to do it via NinjaTrader. So what that means is you go over to NinjaTrader's website. Let me walk you through how this works. All right, let me grab a browser. Okay, N-I-N-J-A-T-R-A-D-E-R. Oh, the allergies are killing me this morning. I don't know why. All right, so if you go over to NinjaTrader, if you're going to buy this for TOS or Ameritrade, you just put your email in here. All right, so you put your email and you hit download free, and then you're going to feed NinjaTrader. You're going to the data feed will be fed through to NinjaTrader via TOS or Ameritrade. So the underlying data will come from TOS, but the charts would be Ninja, and then you would trade on Ninja. All right. So here is your offer. So if you go to, I mean, blow this up. I don't know why it's not blown up here on this side. I think it's because I don't know what I'm doing on the PowerPoint today. There we go. All right, here we go. So this is the this is your deal for the day. Hawkeye volume indicator. You're going to access to a members area so you can download the indicator. Weekly trading rooms. They'll be Thursday. Thursday, and you'll have access to a daily Skype room with a bunch of other Hawkeye traders. All right, total value is three hundred and sixty dollars. You can get it for today for ninety-seven bucks. You have to go to this URL right here, HawkeyeTraders.com forward slash starter, or you can call this telephone number, area code eight five nine nine six three three four four five. All right, so let me grab you that link really quickly. You guys are already fast on the trigger on the phone. Here is your link for that. And there's the link for the phone number two. And then the rest of the time, I'm just going to spend time answering your questions. It does not work on Infinity and Sierra at this time. No, not yet. And then I'll do this also over here. You do this in the chat box. Here is your telephone number. And here is your order now link. And let me put that up there. You'll be good to go. All right. There you have it. All right. Now I'm going to shrink this down. Hopefully you know what all you get there. It's a good indicator. Useful on just about everything. Now what I'm going to do is I use it with Ichimoku. All right. So that's I use, every, I use Ichimoku with everything. So if you've got some symbols, please repeat, repeat what's included in the volume indicator. I lost the internet connection for a short time. Um, you get the Hawkeye volume indicator, access to the members area, weekly trading room, and access to the daily Skype room. So if you go here, if you click this, let me just click and see what happens here. If you go and click there, then your browser will open up, all right, like this right here. I'll show you how to place your order. Give me just a second. And it looks like this. And you can see what you get is you get Hawkeye volume. Hawkeye Volume Paint Bar, which is, I have both of those on my screen right now. Hawkeye Volume Radar, that's for TradeStation. Hawkeye Pivots, and the Hawkeye Wide Bar. So I'll walk you through what all you get. So when you go to order, and it kind of depends on the platform. So if you're a TradeStation user, you click right there. Ninja user, click right there. A Toss user, click Ninja. Uh, a MetaTrader, eSignal, and MultiCharts. So here's how it works. These are the things that you will get in your, your indicator package, all right? Let me let me toggle off my Ichimoku here really quickly so it doesn't confuse you. All right, so the purple bar on this chart is the wide bar, so you get that. The pivots is that yellow dot. The volume is down here at the bottom, and then the paint bar volumes are on the top. So your your charts will look like this. Okay. Consider uh, concerning Ninja, is there a cost to use the platform? I'm on Toss. Uh, no, there. Uh, you just want the free version of Ninja, and you'll just feed it with Toss. No, it's free for good. Uh, has anyone asked already? Does it work on Toss? Uh, yes, it works on Toss, but you have to buy it for Ninja. The only way you can do it on Toss is you get a Ninja Trader thing. There you go. You got it, Rob. All right. So yeah, you get a Ninja Trader, and you feed Ninja Trader with Think or Swim, and then you'll chart on Ninja. Toss, unfortunately, don't lock up their code, so it makes it hard on guys that make indicators. 
because um, you never really want to share your indicator code if, if, if you don't have to. All right. Uh, three time three time frames for stock options. Uh, you can use as many time frames as you want, but yes, Nigel recommends using three time frames. Yes. Uh, if you're using TradeStation as an example, can you use it on more than one computer for one price? Uh, Mark, I don't know the answer to that question. I'll have to find out for you. Um, let me see here. Uh, will it be built for toss without going through Ninja? We don't have any plans to do it at that time because not, Nigel does not want to give his code away for free. Are you comparing the three time frames all red volume, all green volume? You, you can do that, but a lot of those things will rotate in and out of mini, so you'll have a rotational thing going in. So for my purposes, for the chart aspect of it, I'm just going to do dailies and wa walk you through some of that. You can do that. That's not hard. It just it's it's kind of hard to do on a webinar because if you do three different multiple time frames, sometimes it'll mess up people and it'll just freaks them out, and it's really not that hard. Alrighty, let's see here. So yes, it's only it's a ninety-seven dollar one-time fee. Is all it is. It is not a subscription. Uh, it is a one-time fee. Yes. Is there a set number of training sessions to learn about how to use to interpret? Them? You have access to their their trading room on Thursdays, and they do it every Thursdays. And if you have any questions, they'll help you out on that. Yep. Typically, what are the best time frames to monitor? That will be covered in your training that comes with the indicator and also comes with the live trading and the live scope room. So you've got a daily scope room and then you also have a, uh, one of their guys runs the room on uh, Wednesday and Thursday. And if you've got any questions like that, he'll walk you through all that stuff. Super, super easy. And best is a little different. Like there's no such thing as best in trading. There is good enough. But there's no such thing as like a daily and a and a two minute and a five minute are the best time frames. You, there, it's going to be great for some things, but it's going to suck on others. Uh, could you explain the difference in the no demand bar in both up and down markets? Just means it's it's a calculation that doesn't give you a ton of information. They're still buying and selling, but it means the way Nigel's got his indicator set up, the calculation is not bearish and it's not bullish. It's just kind of neutral. It's not giving you a, a ton of edge on that. So in this in this situation. So the Dow is going up on kind of neutral volume, right? So neutral, neutral, bearish, neutral, neutral, bullish. So it probably means that the, the Dow rally will be short-lived and then roll back over. Yep. When is the training going to be held? Uh, they, uh, so you get, the, you, get the, you get the indicator, and then they have uh, a room that's open Thursday, or I'm, I'm sorry, Wednesday and Thursday. That's when their, their trainings are, yes. And then they also have a live Skype room. Uh huh. That's it. All right. The time. I'm not sure when the time is, Michael. I think it's during market hours. Yeah. And then I, b I believe they record them and put them in a resource area too. Yeah. Are there any plans to develop Hawkeye indicators for Sierra charts? Uh, Kurt. May, yeah. I think we have plans for that now. Yeah. We haven't done it yet, but we do have plans for that because we can lock up the code on that one. So yes. Mm hmm. You're very welcome. No, it, once again, it's only $97. It's a one-time fee. It is not a subscription. It's not a membership. They have a membership if you want to sign up for it, but that's not what we're that's not what we're offering today. But if you want to, you could call or email somebody, and they'd help you with that. But that's not what we're doing here. All right, let's do let's do me some symbols, and I'm going to call it a day too. What about CL on a tick or a five-minute range bar? It'll work. I'm just not throwing up 9,000 different charts. <laughs> But yes, it'll work. All right, so let's take a, 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 a gander at crude oil here. I'm going to put on, I'm going to put back on my Ichimoku cloud chart. Uh, still have not made the connection on how it works with ADX in the cloud. Uh, okay, well, let's do, give me an example here and I'll show you. So here's an example of we've got one, we've got one green bar, two green bars above the turning line which means it's probably going to go to the purple line, and then next it'll go to the bottom of the cloud. So that's how I would use that, Michael. Um, all right, Fitbit, okay. Fitbit is obviously broken below the cloud, wide bar, uh, rolling back over. Volume still says it's a sale, so it's probably going to go lower. I have not used it on Renko charts. I don't know if it works on Renko or not, Lou. Um, Russell, at TF. 
The Russell on the daily today has been sideways volume, so no demand. I would just say no edge. So you can see that we had a nice little swing low here with this pivot yellow, and now we're going sideways to slightly higher on no demand. So it's going up on lighter volume, which probably means it's going to roll over before it gets to that purple. Purple line, which is called the standard line. So yes. So I'm going to give you, can everybody see this right here so I, could have, so I don't have to say it a thousand times? There you go. makes my job a ton, ton easier. So it's HawkeyeTraders.com forward slash starter and 859-963-3445. Okay, thanks. I just thought it was volume bars at the bottom along with the pivot points. Oh, you can do that too. Um, like I've got the paint bars on here too, so it's painting the, the physical bar on the chart and the volume below. But that all comes in your package. Yeah, so you're good to go. And and Nigel really is the foremost ex expert on volume and volume analysis. So he's he's got some really good stuff. It's one of the reasons that that we invested in his company. So because it's a really good product, and, and Nigel's a really good guy. All right. So I'm going to walk you through how long is the offer good for? When does it expire? Uh, I don't know the correct answer to that, Tim. But usually they're per webinar is usually how you do them. Uh, I trade off Aramco charts. Do I get my money back if it doesn't work? Uh, uh, Felix, I would say yes, but let me try a Renco chart really quickly before you do that. So that way we don't have to do that. Oh, let me see here. Format symbol. Let me go style. Let me go Renco. Uh, where's the Renco? Right. I don't have. Oh, there it is. Renco. Renco Plus work for you. Let's try that. Da, da, da. Give me just a second. It's taking a long time to dial up. So, Felix, I would just say don't order it if you use Renko. My trade station is taking a while to chew through all of my feed. So, so I would just hold off on it instead of uh, ordering it and then getting a refund. That's what I would do. All right, I'm going to change this back. My chart's going crazy. See what I mean? I try to do. I try to help someone out, and it locks my trade station up. Craziness, I tell you. Craziness. Uh, tick to minutes. There we go. Oh, daily. There we go. Uh -huh. There we go. Back to normal. All right. All right. So give me some symbols, and we'll take a look at some stuff and see how it's working. Uh huh. Okay, WRK, WRK, um, nice selling volume into the turning line, good sell signal, probably going to roll back through 30. Home Depot, HD, Home Depot, so Home Depot is below the cloud. Now, I will tell you on Ichimoku, this is usually a sell, but the lagging line is not confirming, so what I would do is you're above the yellow in the turning line. For me, it's... It, this was this one would be a hurry up and wait and leave it alone until you get back above the cloud. It, you've got some bottoming signals here, you've got some buying volume here, and you've got some bouncing. So for for me, it'd be sideways to slightly higher on Home Depot. AAPL Apple, that's a good one. Apple has just been a sell here, a sell here, a resell there, and it doesn't look like it's going to change anytime soon. If it hits uh, the yellow line, which is 96.98. That's a solid sell signal with a target of about 85. Yeah, Nigel would know the Renko answer, yes. Uh, IWM, which is basically the Russell, is going to be the same thing sideways to slightly lower. It's ramping up. It's, it's bouncing. It's doing a dead cat bounce on no, no, no demand volume. Okay. ABX, which is going to be really close to gold, is a good buy here. All right, that's a good buy. It's above the cloud. All buying volume here probably is going to go to around eleven dollars. Big, a little big, big, big lots overall is a nice little sell. We have got a little bounce here. We're bouncing up on very low buying volume and neutral volume. So when it gets to forty, I would short it. Cat, caterpillar, caterpillar here is a uh, also it's it's had one close above the yellow. If we have another one, we're probably going to go to the purple. I would short it once it gets to 63.43 is what I would do. All right. 
go through a couple of these over here. Here's are some good longs. Give you some examples of some good longs. Here's CUB. CUB looks really good above the cloud. Nice little buying volume. EXR also floated down to the cloud. Didn't get buying volume there, down there, but we got it up here, so that looks pretty good. Here's a couple that I personally like myself. Oh, Wally World, a little Walmart action, sold off into the cloud. Boom, one, two, goodbye signal there. Probably going to go to 68. I also like McDonald's. McDonald's looks really good, perfect example. Sold off, buying one, buying two, target 130. And then here's Cray. Cray looks really good. If the chart will update. There you go, Cray sold off into the cloud. There's one green, two green, you're good to go. There's a pullback, looks good, probably goes to around $47. So that looks good. Your link to buy today is hawkeyetraders.com forward slash starter. The telephone number is 859-963-3445. You might have any questions before I take off. Appreciate you showing up on a Friday around noon. Wish you the best of luck trading, and congratulations on your purchase of your new investment in learning how to use volume better in your trading. Good luck. Hope it helps. See you on the next one, and we'll see you on the videos.